2-0 here for AFC Wimbledon. I'm going to make this post-match analysis fairly short and sweet. Not too much to talk about in that first half. The uh, the chances are a bit few and far between. It was mainly a midfield battle in the first 20 minutes or so. Both teams kind of feeling each other out, winning a lot of battles in the midfield. Um, the weather was, I mean, the weather was a, a huge factor in that first half. Not as much in the second half as both teams were kind of able to adjust to the weather a little bit, but AFC Wimbledon going with the win in that first half. Um, you know, a few of their through balls that they intended to play to the likes of McCormick and the Sal uh, did kind of sail towards the, the uh, goal line as a result of the win. There was one instance in which Nessa Guinness Walker played a nice incisive through ball over to a Sal uh, down kind of the side of the 18 yard box, but the ball kind of got carried by the wind and the Sal wasn't able to get there in time. So that first half was really just, you know, aerial battles. A lot of headers won by both sides in that first half in the midfield. Same with the second half. I mean, this was probably the most header-ridden game of football I've seen in a while. Uh, but the biggest chance of the first half came from Accrington. It was, you know, AFC Wimbledon drawing too many free kicks uh, with Woodyard being the culprit of several of them, you know. You like to see Alex Woodard getting stuck in the challenge, but he did overcommit on a few of the challenges. There was one instance in which McConville turned his back and Woodyard just kind of got stuck in a little bit too hard there. And uh, McConville, from about 24 yards out, his delivery was fairly solid for Accrington. He was one of the better players here for Accrington. I think all around Accrington were a little disappointed with their performance, especially in the second half. First half, I think they adapted to the wind a little bit better than Wimbledon. I think they were a little bit more clinical in possession. Uh, McConville, like I said, with that free kick opportunity, played it to the top of the six area. Uh, the best chance of the game coming in that instance where Pell tried to uh, to nod it towards goal. Just wadded the frame. That was a bit of a let off there from AFC Wimbledon. Chucka was on the mark there. Kind of caught a little too far forward. Tried to leap for the header, but couldn't win that one. To be fair, Chucka did win a lot of aerial battles today. And him and Bishop kind of had a bit of a battle today in terms of the physicality. I think Chucka got a little bit of the better end of of the battles against Bishop. Uh, but when he did go up against Hennigan, I think Bishop did pretty well against Hennigan. There was one instance in which he held the ball up and then played a incisive through ball to McConville who tried to volley it towards the back post and good save by Zana. This was in the uh, 82nd minute. I just wanted to talk about how Bishop played today for Accrington Stanley. Uh, this was when AFC Wimbledon were already 2-0 up and McConville tried to blast it towards goal off of that nice little incisive pass on the holdup from Bishop. Good save by Zanev in that instance. And Zanev had another really, really big stop, by the way. Again, already 2-0 up. Uh, it was the 85th minute or so when uh, there was a cross played in. It was headed away. Uh, or, well, the first header was won by either Hennigan or Chaka, but then uh, McCormick got a clearance away, but not the best clearance. I think McCormick kind of had a couple of those where one time he tried to get a clearance and he whiffed it. But luckily, nothing came of that. That instance, he tried to get a clearance, but not fully away. Straight out to McConville. McConville played the cross back in. There was just so many numbers in the box for Accrington. Somebody got an outside of the foot kind of redirect towards goal, top of the six. And Zana just came out, made himself big. Uh, the cross was too far for Zana to get a punch. But any keeper could have easily stayed rooted to his spot, stayed rooted to his line. But Zana came out, made himself big. That was the right decision. And again, on the commentary, Rob Cornell said something about uh, Bezo being happy with that. Bezo would be happy with that. Uh, very good goalkeeping coach. And Zanev coming up big in that instance as well. A couple of decent saves uh, in the last 10 minutes coming from Zanev. And another thing that Zanev did pretty well today, he actually engaged in a couple of sweeper-keeper moments. And one of those moments in particular I would like to highlight was an instance where there was a little bit of a chip ball over the top from a center back intended for, I don't remember who it was that received it, but it was a center attacking mid, I think. It was either Pell or McConville. I think it was Pell. He received it, took a couple of touches back towards Accrington's own, you know, own, uh, own half, and then played a square ball to the right, and there was a through ball played in behind, uh, you know, in, in behind that space, that gap that opened up from Chuka coming out. And Zana came out right away quick. And I think his starting position was a little bit high uh, because he recognized that threat. Chaka came up. I think he might have taken a couple steps forward, anticipating that through ball coming in. And he came out, sweeper keeper, cleared it. And there were a couple of moments where they played a couple balls over the top, Accrington, and Zanev headed it out for a throw in a couple of times. 
So Zanev all around solid today. So now let's talk about the goals from AFC Wimbledon. Asu was a factor in both of those goals. So Asu did dish the assist on that first one, took it to his left, played the ball in to McCormick down uh, the six yard area. And McCormick's first touch was mwah, picture perfect. Takes a heavy touch to get away from his man. Even though he was down the six, you typically don't want to take your first touch close to you if you're that close to the center because the defender will just get a nick off of it. And it was, um, I think that was, who was that on the defense? It was uh, Nottingham on the defense. Nottingham, who's had the most starts for Accrington, started every game for Accrington, wasn't able to get the better of Luke McCormick, who got a very good first touch on that six-yard area to, uh, to set himself up for a far post finish. And Luke McCormick, while he was a little bit sketchy defensively with a couple of missed clearances and a couple of clearances that didn't go his way, he was good on the offensive end. Good uh, off-the-ball runs for McCormick and uh, did see a pretty good finish. And McCormick, actually, in the eighth minute, could have done better on one instance where Amanakwa just failed. I think he whiffed a clearance or something, and uh, he ran onto the ball. His first touch took him away from goal. I'm not sure what that was about. He tried to backflick it to a Sal down the six and a Sal couldn't get on the end of that one maybe a little a little bit too cute on that one as well I think McCormick maybe could have tried to turn and take Sykes on 1v1 but other than that I think McCormick played pretty well it was a good finish for McCormick in that instance and then the second goal second goal once again Paul Osu involved on the offensive end uh he was notable for both goals Paul Osu it was a, a square ball down from Ayuba Sal who actually held it up from the top of the 18 instead of trying to take his man on 1v1. He played it down square to Osu. Osu was double teamed by uh, Coyle and I think Hamilton. And he took a heavy touch toward his left, drives the shot low and hard, bounces off of Amanakwa, and just fell to the feet of Asal, who was able to poke it home through the legs of Savin. And Paul Osu, have yourself... <laughs> Pat on the back, my man. Paul Osu was great today. Uh, I didn't give him enough credit on the stream today. He was involved in both goals. And uh, every now and again, Osu did struggle to recover defensively. That's because, you know, he's a very offensive-minded player. I shouldn't say he struggles. To, it's just the fact that he, you know, he goes up on the offense. And, um, you know, sometimes when you pump yourself forward, it's hard to track back. But we did a really good job, AFC Wimbledon, of, um, of helping the outside backs when they, when they go up a little bit too far forward. The likes of a Sal on that right-hand side helping out on the defense when... Uh, when Osu goes up on the attack, and then Hardigan, Radoni helping out Nesta Guinness Walker on that left hand side. I think that really kind of stifled Accrington Stanley uh, at times. And Accrington could have easily found opportunities to take it down the touchline, take a heavy touch towards the 18 yard box, and maybe play a ground cross down the six. 90% uh, of Accrington's crosses have been in the air, most of which AFC Wimbledon have dealt with for the most part. There were a couple of instances where Asal dispossessed after uh, dispossessed the other team after Osu came forward. Nicely done from Asal. Nicely done from Hardigan to help on the defense. Nicely done from Rodoni to help out on the defense. Uh, but Hardigan Rodoni didn't have to help as much because Guinness Walker has been pretty solid on on the defensive end in terms of defensive discipline. I think in the last few games, uh, Guinness Walker has been better in terms of positioning, has been better in terms of knowing when to go forward and when to stay back. I think Nessa Guinness Walker, as much stick as he has received earlier in the season, uh, Guinness Walker has listened to the criticism. He's worked on his defensive uh, defensive trackbacks, and his overall defensive game has been a little bit more versatile, a little bit more solid. So credit to Guinness Walker for the defensive performance today. Uh, Chaka and Hennigan every now and again, um, not winning on the, the duels against Bishop on the physicality sense. I think Bishop did a pretty good job on the holdup. You know, overall solid performance from Wimbledon. I think the only real chances of the game from Accrington came uh, with that header from Pell in the first half. There was a, a header, 10-yard header down the six in which uh, Rodgers tried to steer towards goal and he missed on that one. And then the two saves from Zanev in the end. Accrington, a little bit too predictable. They played it towards that right-hand side quite a lot in that second half. And I think AFC Wimbledon were able to, uh, to adapt pretty well. I'd say my man of the match would have to be Ayuba Sal. Ayuba Sal got on the score sheet, and he was up and down the pitch all over the place. He drew a couple of fouls. There were a couple of instances where uh, once in the first half where he beat Connolly for pace. Connolly got a slide tackle in, but only a partial 
slide tackle lane, only got part of the ball, and Asal took a heavy touch ahead of him and drew the foul from Hamilton. And then in the second half, um, he dispossessed somebody after Paul Osu got, got beat a little bit uh, on the defensive end. He tried to recover, got beat. Uh, Asal recovered well. And then he immediately uh, spun out. Osu played a through ball over to him, drew the foul from Hamilton after a good heavy first touch. And, um, yep, yeah, another... In uh, that was a tackle from Nottingham, actually. The first half was the tackle from Hamilton. So a couple of instances where Sal drew the foul, got on the score sheet, helped defensively, all around solid. Uh, and it's going to be that time again. Highlighting a couple of tweets here from AFC Wimbledon fans, AFC Wimbledon faithful. Brooklyn Don, I think we already highlighted one of uh, one of his comments on a previous video, but great win under terrible conditions. We scored both goals against the wind, and the common feature of both was the involvement of Paul Osu. He's been getting better with each match. I would have to agree in terms of improving for each match. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. I know I did say earlier in the video that he did get caught out a couple of times on the defensive end, but that's because he's he's always willing to go up and you know willing to contribute on the offensive end. And credit to Guinness Walker, who hasn't gone up as frequently as he does in previous games, recognizing that, hey, you know, Paul Lost is going up. Give him a little bit of freedom. Nessa Guinness Walker has been a little bit more sound defensively, a little bit, a little bit more disciplined defensively. And uh, Paul Lost, did contribute in uh, both of those goals. And we got George, and we got George Brown at George B709 69309. Ollie Palmer driving back home with all three points. Hey, let's go. Gotta love him, man. I mean, only Palmer today, uh, he wasn't as involved as in other games. I think there were, um, you know, a couple of times where he won a couple knockdowns, and there was one instance in the first half where uh, he, there was a little bit of a ball played over his head, and he knocked it down with the outside of his foot down the 18-yard box, played it to Rodoni. Rodoni played it out to a Sal, and a Sal kind of hesitated a little bit. I think uh, he wanted, his first touch was a little bit too close to him, so he kind of hesitated. Do I take the shot on? Do I not? And then it, it allowed uh, the center back to uh it was Aminakwa who came in and got in the block on that far post effort uh so you know mccormick as i mentioned earlier with a chance in the eighth minute or so not taking advantage and then a sound not taking advantage in that one you know first half it was a little bit shaky for Wimbledon. um i think that they weren't as clinical as accrington stanley and accrington well they weren't too clinical either with that header from pell uh off of the free kick from mcconville could have put it away easily but he didn't so uh, both teams kind of feeling each other out in the first half, and I think Accrington were just a little too predictable in that second half. AFC Wimbledon were able to adapt to their play. Accrington did win a couple headers in the final third. Uh, Rogers almost got a, a header in, in towards goal in that second half, and obviously there was a good cross played into the top of the sixth that have came out and saved it. But other than that, solid performance from the Dons. I think Paul Osu, you know, happy to see him on the attack involved in both goals. Asal was a nuisance as always. And before I close this video out, I want to highlight... A post on the AFC Wimbledon fans group, Alex Ramsden, our traveling fan, uh, traveling fans, brilliant as always. That looks like an absolute freaking party. The scenes there, even though there weren't too many numbers because of the fact that, you know, London to Accrington. I think they brought a decent amount of uh, decent amount of fans up there, even despite the uh, the distance. And obviously, you know, the fans celebrating with the players, with the, uh, the railing not being too high up, you know, it being kind of a, a smaller ground. You know, not too many uh, security barriers there. The Dons were able to uh, celebrate with the fans there. It's brilliant.